Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audiblepodcast.com slash Media. Over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player. I'm getting awesome! You're getting awesome! We're getting awesome! Yeah, that's what I said now! Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast. We're here. I'm back on the couch. We're getting back to the norm. And we have a norm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. First, let's go to uh, let's, let's go to Rob Whoa, De La Creta. Wait. Whoa, did we just lose a light? No, I unplugged it. Did you... <laughs> I slightly bumped the cord. Oh, Chachi, we... we're losing lights in the studio. Oh. That's what happens when Chachi's back in command. He's working on that. Oh, All right, let's send it over to Rob De La Creta out in the, out in the field. Out in the field. Out in the field. But he's here. I well, not here. here, but he's I'm out. Here. He's not here. So yeah. you're out there experiencing, right. giving us the 411 on the earthquake in your area. <laughs> 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 Let's uh, set it down. The Cub Reporter, Rob De La Creta. How you doing? Good. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a great start. I just I can hardly contain myself. Uh, so, uh... I have another, another uh, a bit of, of fan info you might be interested in. Okay. 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 Uh, you know, you know that thing that I sent you. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So uh, think, apparently, uh, you want me to put that up now? That's your you, cue, Chachi. That's what we you call should, a cue. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the show notes. Yeah. I, a uh, I had it ready. an internet celebrity that shall go uh, unnamed who listens to this show. Oh. Quote unquote. Uh, so they have a dog, a small dog. Mm-hmm. And this dog likes to watch Awesome Cast, but does not want to watch me. Does not want to watch Chachi. Specifically, Eyes on Sorg. What? Wow. What? Yeah. Does Don't... not care about the Awesome Cast unless Sorg is on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but dogs love me. Kids, dogs. You know, I find that shocking. They love. They love me. They love yeah. me. Apparently, so, that's so amazing. Like... I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know I had such a good rapport with dogs over the internet. You have canine I, fans. I have canine fans. This is fantastic. So, well, excellent, excellent. <laughs> also with us is, uh, well, Chachi's behind the, the, the ones and the twos. The He's ones, back in the command center. The ones and the twos. And the sevens there and sometimes are. the eights. There you are. There he is. There he is, rocking what? it. So we're getting back in the back in the jive of things. What? He's back from injury. He's rehabbed. Rehab. His button, his button pusher, his uh, is working. How you doing? My button pusher. Your button pusher. My button pusher was never broken. I think it was just a side effect. Oh, I'm well. Thank you for asking, sir. All right, excellent. You, w- w- you want to give him the contact info? So uh, we can- well, I was going to finish introducing everybody, like that guy behind your shoulder right oh, there. Oh, right. Like Norm Hughesman. You mean like that? Is joining us now from iTwixie.com. That's right. <laughs> Stop changing. He's a man that can't stay in one place. No. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm on the move. Unfortunately, it didn't work out at Loud Mountain. And uh, <laughs> I'm at iTwixie now, which is pretty cool. Uh, and iTwixie is a social network for tween girls. So um, if you need to talk to tweens, let me know, and I'll give you the hookup. So. <laughs> that sounds a little weird. Wow. Uh, but, and there's silent. Oh, yeah, there you go. I switched too early. <laughs> all right. That's all right. That's all right. I switched too early. Let's roll with it. We're rolling with the flow. Silent Ninja's joining us in the studio. Student at large. Now you're well. You're going in the uh, back to art now, aren't you? Yeah. You're doing programming for a while. Now you're doing the the the, the art thing, uh, the graphic art. Yeah. So uh, have you started that yet? Make um, up your mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Technically, Wait. not really in it yet. No. Is he up? Is his his mic up? He should be two Hello? or three. Hello. Hello. Yes. There he is. He's up. Um. Yeah, well, you, we, like like Norm uh, is is new to a new job. You're new to a new field. Yeah. So. Um, but that's all right. Hey, we're figuring it out. That's cool. That's mm-hmm. cool. Uh, anyways, uh, this is the awesome cast. You can find us, and I, hopefully a few new people have found us, and I'm sorry for the first impression, uh, at awesomecast.com. Of course, we were down there at Baltimore Comic Con, uh, <laughs> passing out stickers. Uh, passing out these stickers, actually, Shachi. Have you pop it right over to me? Oh, yeah, you can get us at contact at awesomecast.com, 724-25-A-class, or uh, 242... What is an A-class? A-cast, A-cast, A-cast. Let's check it. Yes. Oh, he's still pointing at it. That's... Okay. Okay. 
There he is. There he is. There you go. So, yeah, this is where we get our geek on. And as the stickers say, tech news banter, period. Awesome. And there you have it. There you have it, guys. Um, so, uh, before we get into everything, I do want to touch on some fan interactions from this last week. First of all, Chachi, this one's calling you out. Yeah, I saw that. It says, uh, just from AJ, who's been on the show uh, quite frequently. Uh, just so we're all clear, Chachi said Sony and, and Microsoft had nothing at E3, and then said Nintendo won hands down. He was excited, and he's calling for the end of Nintendo consoles. So, to recap, everyone lost at E3. Uh, Chachi, your thoughts? Technically, no. What? Like, I'm, I'm not going to argue with the fact that I, I said that Nintendo is losing. Like, it's going to end for consoles and everything. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to argue that I said that because I did say that. And I'm not going to argue the fact that I did call Nintendo the winner at uh, E3. However, you have to look at the facts. At the point in time that I declared Nintendo the winner of E3, we had very minimum information, mm -hmm. and more information has come out since then. So at the time, Nintendo was the winner of E3 until they started telling us the truth. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so we, we, because they were very catty about like what information they gave out about it. Right. I mean, uh, they didn't come out and tell us everything, so... But yeah, uh, it turns out everyone lost at E3. And yeah, okay. So all right. Um, we also have a couple things from Funky Dung. Actually, can you do that uh, that win link on there to bring up for the folks to check out? Uh, I I'm always interested in interesting things to to do with old Nintendos. I was very happy in Bald. <laughs> what? What? No, go ahead and introduce the story. No, that's that's interesting. Let's no. show, go ahead and show it off here. This is something Funky Dung sent us. Uh, somebody uh, turned their Nintendo into. Uh, and we scroll down there. Yeah, I'm trying to get the mouse there. <laughs> I don't... This mouse does not like me. Just use the wheel. I'm trying. It's not over there. I don't... I lost it. There we go. <laughs> <sighs> but... So there it is. There, there it is for you video people. Uh, we got the controller out front. And you scroll down. And, uh... Oh, there's toast. Oh, look! There's there, a sandwich! There's a sandwich. It's a freaking lunchbox! Okay, here's my problem. What's your problem with... Why... What's not cool about this? <sighs> No, I'm not saying it's not cool. Okay. It's just poorly done. Why? Well, okay, okay. Now, now It's you... taped! It's taped? Really? What do you think that bright pink crap is? Hold on, I'm going to have to look at this. Is there a link somewhere? <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, it's in the show notes. It's under win. Uh, <clears throat> under Funky Dong, he sent right. it in. It says win, nerd uh, something. Deliciously nerdy repurposing. Yeah, oh. It says. Let's yeah. Let, let me... As a maker... Yeah, some gray duct tape would have been totally appropriate, but not pink. Right! Are you sure that's pink duct tape? But it's too small for me to see from here. But yeah, I, that's... Unless it's pink Twinkies. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. No, that's tape. Yeah, it's tape. That's crap. It is on fail blog, just to say. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that could have been really cool, but the tape really kills see? it. There you go. So I, now I challenge... the only one. Now I challenge somebody else to do a better lunchbox. I'm working on one. You're working on a lunchbox? I, I need a Dremel. Okay. I don't own a Dremel, so I need a Dremel. Okay. But I am working on a lunchbox with hinges and everything... To make it got like better. five Dremels, you know. Well, I need a Dremel. I don't have one. Shouldn't your friend DJ Lunchbox be on top of this? Oh, oh that's very true. calling you out, DJ Lunchbox. Yeah, that's true. He that's he should be. Funny of you. Oh. So yeah, there's that. So there's I mean, that. it's cool, but it would have been cooler. Sans pink duct tape. It's it would have been ice cold, you might say. Oh no, actually, because there's no thermal unit or anything like that. <laughs> that can't be ice cold there's no thermal unit attached see when you first showed me that pic i really thought it was going to be a uh, dvd player or maybe a ps3 or well actually probably more appropriately a wii but uh yeah mm -hmm. oh that'd be awesome put a wii inside a nintendo it's plenty mm -hmm. big enough right oh it's oh, it yeah be able to i've seen um I i've seen projects in the past where uh they've put uh many pcs like you know those little those boards they put in shuttles and stuff and they'll put like a uh, a laptop DVD player in you know where the where the case flips up, and uh, rewire the uh, the control pads to go to keyboards and mice. So I mean, maybe a Mac Mini or something. Oh, oh, like you, well, that, that's too easy. That's got to be too easy. You just stick that in there, and so yeah, that, that would really be just like a. You'd have to duct tape it down or something. Oh, and, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> 
Or just set, or the new non-optical ones, just set them inside a Nintendo case and run the wires yeah. on and you're good to go. So, there you go. That's a good way to hide your media center, right? <laughs> no? Yeah, you get robbed. Yeah, no one's picking up a Nintendo. No one's picking up a Nintendo. Hell, we, you know, we got, uh, somebody broke into our cafe over the weekend. Uh, really? The, they, uh, they took, um, the quarters. We didn't let leave the money or the iPad. Uh, we just, we left all the change, right? They, they took all the quarters. They took three, two or three packages of bacon, but, did, <laughs> but did not take the obviously sitting out iPhone that we use for Pandora, the first gen iPhone. Nor the docking station. Nor any of the pop in the open cooler. Hmm. Wow. So, huh. I don't know. Well, I mean, that first-gen iPhone, you can't even download apps on that anymore. So, I mean, what's the yeah, point? Yeah, you can. You, yeah, you can. It, it goes up to, like, what, version 3, iOS 3, and uh, you can still get a few bucks out of that. Okay. So, because people still, like, unlock them and stuff and play with them. But, but still, I mean, just, like, but, you know, a lot of people don't even understand that that's an old iPhone. So, I, I thought that was interesting. And I'm glad I didn't take it, because then I wouldn't have anything for us to play Pandora on down at the cafe. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, so apparently there's a big story that happened while I was in my uh, hi- my podca- podcasting hibernation here. Uh, Sprint's getting an iPhone? Yeah! What? The iPhone's coming to, coming to Sprint. With, like, a quote-unquote and a date and everything. It's a little wow. scary. Wow. Uh, Sprint Nextel Corp. will begin selling the iPhone 5 in mid-October. Uh, people familiar with the matter said, to closing a huge hole in the number three U.S. carriers lineup and giving Apple Incorporated another channel for selling its popular phone. The timing, however, indicates Apple's new iPhone will hit the market later than expected and too late to contribute to sales in the company's fiscal fourth quarter, which ends in September. This uh, That quote's from the Wall Street Journal. And this also uh, gives credence to the rumor that came out today that we are going to see uh, discounted uh, iPhone 4s on the market in September. In advance of the iPhone 5 coming out. Exactly. Well, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, okay, so because they're clearing stock, basically. Right? Yeah, exactly. They're just going to clear stock. I mean, we're not going to get the same iPhone when that no. comes out. It's going to be like they're going to drop it down. We're having like an 8 gig uh, iPhone 4 like we do with the 3GSs that are like 50 bucks or free. Right. They, they're actually doing free mm, iPhone 3GSs. What's that? Nothing. Oh, okay. Uh, but I don't know. This was an inevitable one. I think I think they need to do it with uh, how much you know Android's getting the numbers up on them, and it's inevitable. You know what what what, what was keeping them on Verizon? You know. So now is T-Mobile going to get it? Are they going to bother at this point? Nope. Because they actually have to do something with that. I don't know what the difference is between Verizon and Sprint's networks, but uh, but they definitely have to do like a frequency change or something for T-Mobile, right? For T-Mobile? No. No, you don't have to do anything for T-Mobile. No, T-Mobile no. was one of the first networks that you could. Uh, yeah, you it's could just the same as AT and T. No, I mean, yeah, well, or, it's GSM yeah. like AT and T, but when you jailbreak an AT and T phone, you can only yeah. get Edge on it. You don't get three G. Is that a thing? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a thing. Um, so I don't know, maybe. So who has the free iPhone? Um, there was, I think Best Buy was doing a day yesterday with it, when oh, okay. free on contract, so, but, Because um, I've been thinking about doing one of those discounted phones for my parents, because they have some crappy flip phone that was made in probably 2001. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you just, know. Just to get them kind of in, in on the, on the ground floor of that for, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I hate it when my mom can't, like change the volume setting she has to like wait for my sister or somebody some person under the age of 35 to you know change the phone <laughs> volume settings or you know or if it auto- somehow gets turned off and she can't ever receive a, a call you know like I, ha- I hate that that my mom can't operate a phone you know? so oh here chill is actually in the chat room uh they have to add a frequency to get 3g uh their up and down streams are on different frequencies unlike at and that uses one band for up and down okay uh, so so there is a little bit of difference in the technology so, um, yeah, I'm just, sorry, I'm in the chat room now. Um, must be good bacon. Yes, it is damn good bacon at Cafe Solstice, sir. Speaking of bacon, I saw Google legitimately reference PodCamp 2 bacon, spam email, and with a link to Wikipedia uh, about uh, about it. So, 
it's official now. I mean, I think I said this back in the day when, when bacon, the first bacon buzz was happening that yeah. until Google adopts this, it's not really going to happen, but Google has adopted this. Now this was in a how to help article about how to use Gmail, but it's there. It's a lot. I can't think this is the first time that, uh, that we've heard Google use bacon though. Mm. It's, uh, it's been I'm referenced in uh, major news outlets before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not, not everybody knows where it came from, but still, I mean, it's, it's definitely been out there. What we saw, like in a German magazine or something like that, right? It was in Wired. It was in Wired. And, um, yeah. yeah, it was on NPR a couple of times in the New York Times, actually. And then a couple of, um, it was like New Word of the Year. It was up for New Word of the Year in a couple of places. Like, um, I want to say, I forget where, like uh, Newsweek or some, some, some random place like that. And uh, but no, if you check the w- Wikipedia page, it actually lists the names of the folks who were involved in that. So Jesse Hambly and Andy Quayle, and it talks about PodCamp Pittsburgh too, nice. where it came from. Nice. So nice. That's that's awesome. That's awesome that we were kind of a part of a internet meme history there. Yeah. So excellent. Well, guys, uh, you know I was at Baltimore Comic Con. I was there with Blengo of Mangtoons.com. It's been on the show before. Uh, we were promoting, we're handing out stickers. And I got to attend some sessions, as I like to do. No, you did uh, Only a couple, though, since we were doing a booth and everything. Uh, but uh, one I sat in on was Digital Comics uh, by uh, Comixology. Uh, have, you, have you guys, you guys read comics? Anybody reading comics on their iPads or anything? Nope. Nope. Nobody's, nobody's there yet, right? I read uh, Scott oh, Pilgrim. You do? He's reading Scott Pilgrim. Right, now, did you. Now, Matt, did you get these on Comixology or. Uh, they have an, a specific app for Scott yeah, Pilgrim. Yeah, yeah. Comixology does that. Here, bring that over here so I can bring it up on the crotch cam. Um, go drop that over, Chach. So, yeah, this is. I mean, it came up when, you know, I think we still just had iPhones. And it's going. It's pretty nice. It goes panel to panel. It's kind of like, you know, the smart technology to convert it. And everything, and, but you know, I, I don't think everybody was, you know, the creators didn't seem to be quite on board with this format. But now with the iPad, and uh, what they did was they had a pretty good panel with uh, what was <clears> the <throat> Matt Smith from Bone, uh, and uh, they probably had like eight different creators on here. And here I, you know, I got some uh, Batman Dark Knight on, and you see it's very like this is shaped perfectly for a comic book. And these guys are really excited about this as a format. Uh, one thing I know, you know, just like we hear a lot with the other publishing industries, um, you know, comic sales are just kind of okay. They're not great, you know, like they were a few years ago. But one thing they noticed is a lot of people, the the comic cons are more packed than ever. And uh, but, you know, so where are the sales going if everybody's showing up for there? Is everybody just excited because they saw the latest Captain America movie? You know. Um, so one of the thoughts with this is, you know, now that we have like something like Comixology, which is apparently is doing really good, um, you're seeing a little bit of phenomenon happening here. Uh, people are getting more involved with this and like the people that are, you know, maybe don't go get comics originally because they get into something like the movies or the cartoons, think it's cool. Like, you know, you see Spider-Man everywhere, but they don't want to go to a comic shop because there's the, you know, maybe some connotations to that, right? Now they can just kind of privately in their own home go through the app and buy it. Um, and, and, I, and some of the stuff they're talking about, like I can buy it on my phone, it comes over to my iPad. I think there's a, a version you can get on the, is it on the computer as uh, well? I'm not sure. Um, but I, I, I think you're able to read them on the computer as well. Like, so, it's kind of, so, so it is kind of like that Kindle effect. So uh, that's pretty cool. But... Um, uh, another phenomenon they had with this was the, the guy on Bone, they, they uh, released uh, Bone and Razzle, you know, the independent apps like you were talking about with Scott Pilgrim that you had. Um, they had, uh, uh, they, they came out at the same time and they they saw that, and he, and he saw numbers out of them that were pretty pretty incredible, but they were even across the board. And for those who don't know, Bone is a pretty, you know, a pretty important uh, book. Um, they, there's lines around for that, that creator. Uh, that almost reached to our booth. So, um, but he saw that the numbers of both of them were equal, Razzle and Bone. Uh, whereas in print, it's not. And plus, we're talking about stuff like the independents. When you put the magazines out, they get through their issues. The 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 comic shops are, feel lucky they're putting the independents out uh, or, or get get rid of them, and they won't order anymore. Whereas if it was doing good, they wouldn't sell any more of those, and they have more of an opportunity here. 
So, I mean, have you guys heard anything about the, the what comic books are doing digitally? Have you any thoughts of what's going on there? Is this like another Kindle, you think? Um, I know uh, Andy Anadko is a, is a huge comic guy, and he's been he's been saying for a while that uh, things like tablet PCs and the iPad uh, especially have been uh, uh, are going to be instrumental in bringing comics to like because a lot of comic book stores have gone out of business just because mm-hmm. it's physical mm-hmm. media and, and the sort of people who read comic books tend to be the kind of people who are more likely to uh, want to download it or whatever and I know who was it one of the I don't read comic books normally so I don't know a whole lot but I know one of the major publishers in the last year or so decided to digitalize like their entire collection or something like that. Uh, well what the big news out of the Comic Con was that uh, DC DC is actually relaunching all of their titles all their major titles and with number ones uh, for whatever reason, um, and, and when they do that at the end of this month, at the end of August here, uh, they're going to start releasing their comics day and date with the print, hmm. which is pretty big. And certain certain guys have been doing that. I think Walking Dead has been doing that for a while, um, and that's that's the thing where you know we see they're on par with each other. And it's going to be really interesting when somebody as big as DC does that. Are you going to be selling more titles of Batman in the stores or online? And what does that do? Because a uh, nice contrast, I also got the chance to sit in on the uh, the Marvel panel. And it was very like, you know, hey guys, you know, we'd really love to do creative and interesting things, but if nobody's buying it, we have to cancel it. And versus this panel was a lot of... Uh, Hey, we're really excited, and you guys are buying our interesting books because they're on digital. Yeah, you know, you know who goes who goes out and buy comics. Who would really benefit from this? What's that? Those uh, big, big guys with the neck beards carrying the Baja Blast. <laughs> they're the ones that are excited about. Are everything. they excited about this? Because uh, because yes, I mean they don't have to leave the room anymore. Well, no. Uh, okay, okay. There's that. Uh, but the accessibility, as like comic book shops, if they're doing the right thing, and there was a couple, there was a couple of uh, uh, the creators were saying that when they went on their comic book store tour about how some of them were really good about cultivating a, a, a community and people were just hanging out there to be around the culture. You know, it's a very, very involved culture thing. But not everybody's going to be involved in the culture to sell books. It's just like, it's like what we talk about, like, you know, the, I, you know, the iPhone is, is popular not just because the enthusiasts are into it. The, the enthusiasts went out and bought HP touchpads this past week, which we'll talk about, you know, but it's everyday people are picking up the iPhone and that's what's getting the sales. And that's what comic books need right now is they need the everyday people to have access to it. You know, I mean, I didn't have a comic shop growing up in our town. I had the newsstand and they didn't have half the stuff half the time. You know, I went to the Bilo and they had like four books and those were the ones I got into. You went to the wrong newsstand then. Anyways, well, but still (laughs) that one's not even there anymore. Which one? The the news depot. It's pretty not. Sure, I'm pretty sure it's gone. Oh, you have been yeah, there Mike. I I feel the same way about comics, and mm. I uh, I kind of feel like I'm a fringe person in the sense that I would love to get into comic books, and I really like the stories, and you know that the the whole you know the whatever. But it's a it, the it's a barrier for me to enter into that because I think like it's the cost. Like I'm not yeah. like yeah, a hardcore comic guy. I might want to follow maybe one or two stories like Spider-Man or maybe some other random things, but you know, I'm not going to go way out of my way to get them. And, you know, I feel like investing them or spending the money on it really is just, I'm kind of on the fence about it a lot of times. So is digital going to bring the price per book down? And I mean, are you still have ads in the comic books? Like, so how does all that work? Because if it's cheaper and it's digital, it's definitely going to be easier. And, um, obviously the iPads, the, an amazing medium for it. Uh, looking at the iPad here, oh, uh, and actually you find that a lot of these things are a lot cheaper. A lot of the books typically run a dollar ninety nine. Well, I'm seeing some of these books. I think they're a little longer, going for three ninety nine, four ninety nine. Uh, how much were the Scott Pilgrim books when you went through them? Uh, they're like eight bucks each. They're eight bucks, but those are thick mangas. They're like one hundred twenty yeah. pages. Um, 
But and they have a lot of and they're normally like eleven. And they do have a lot of deals like that. I'm looking through DC's '90s spot. Like it's kind of like an app store kind of thing where they had a Marvel Mondays where like twelve, like a year's run of uh, Invincible Iron Man was ninety nine cents. Uh, but yeah, it does seem like most of them are dollar ninety nine for first run titles. Um, and and for me, that's about the point where I got out of comics when it started raising to two fifty two, you know, three dollars, and now it's four dollars. Even some of the creators are like, "My God, it's four dollars for a book. How are we supposed to sell these things?" You know, I, right? And I, another another thing is the you know collecting the stories like week to week or month mm-hmm. to month, however often they come out. Exactly. Like maybe I'll maybe I'll pick up like a series of like seven issues, and then I'm like, okay, I'm waiting for the next few to come out, and I forget about it or. I miss one in there and it's not available. So being able to collect them or, or just read the whole story for whatever run run that's going on is, is going to be good. Like civil war is a good example for me because I was really interested in the whole, what they were going to, the whole thing, what they were doing with it. But I ended up not reading it because um, it was just so spread out over all these different stories. And I didn't, I wasn't going to invest the time to just track everything down. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it should be a little easier uh, what, because they were talking about like, following creators if you like one book they did you know if i like bone maybe it would recommend razzle and go in that way um but it would be easier to follow along those things i think on here as well if they are releasing them free and you know full you know right um I, i'm actually going to experiment with this i want to try to enter now i've been reading some comics but i've been reading them through some other means uh, you know, be a trade paperbacks or just uh, get my hands on some digital copies. But I'm actually going to go, uh, you know, and try this and and try to get back into comics, specifically probably with the DC uh, uh, relaunch. Um, Batman. Yeah, Batman's the first thing I'm going to buy. To be honest, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to set aside ten bucks a month, buy some books, try to buy some regular books, and you know, see how the experience is, and and you know, if I dig it. And one thing, if you get this Comicsology app, there's a whole section here of comics that are free, uh, that you can just try stuff out, which is kind of nice. Like the first issue of uh, the Wanted, which they did the movie on. Um, you know, what's the app called? It's Comicsology, and like actually, that. you yeah, and it's on Android. It's on all the devices. It's on the PC. It's on the Mac. Mac pulled up the comics. Did you pull that up in browser? Yeah. So you, you can read them all in a browser. It, it does the Kindle thing where it's across them all. And it doesn't do, like, I don't think it's saving my page, but this is significantly shorter than, than a book. So I don't think it's as big of a problem. Um, but uh, I, I think I think it's something that can be fun uh, and, and reintroduce a lot of people to this. And, uh, and, and, and if you've been in comics and want to look back, uh, you know, give it a shot, you know. Uh, and there's also, like you said, you got the Scott Pilgrim map. They're all linked together. If you download the Scott Pilgrim app or the Walking Dead app, because that's what you follow, uh, one nice thing it'll do notifications when you have new uh, new issues out. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it does. And have you played with it? Yeah, I read comics on there all the time. Why aren't you contributing to this? <laughs> <laughs> because you're on. Hey, a I'm roll. downloading the app right now. Okay, I do- <laughs> You know, I, I, I you're I, on a roll. I, I tested I'm just it like you go. way back in the day when I just had the iPhone, and I actually was like, oh, Comicsology. I haven't checked these guys out for a while. I wonder, wonder what they're doing because it was always like Independence, and maybe there's a couple DC books, but they're like a couple months old or something. And uh, and this is what they need to do is have this day and day. And I don't know what Marvel's doing in in relation. I don't know if they're completely day and date yet, but uh, that they they should be soon. I would hope. Uh, the only thing I I. I kind of like the uh, Marvel's Unlimited, Digital Unlimited, I've been hearing about since we went to New York Comic Con a couple years ago. Uh, 60 bucks a year for all their stuff. It's not like the most recent, but there's a lot of uh, back catalog in there. Uh, but it's all on a PC. You know, I, I'm really not into that whole reading on the PC thing like the Silent Ninja's doing right now. Um, but uh, they bring that the iPad, I mean. But that probably, that will cut into this. So. Yeah, th- I, I wasn't commenting because it's been a while since I picked up the app. Yeah, yeah, and, and they've made I, I a never, lot of changes. They've made I've a lot of changes. I've never bought anything on there. I was just reading or Check. trying to read free comics, and it just didn't catch my interest. No, was it the panel to panel that threw you? Yeah. But if you had something like an iPad or Android tablet or something, you think you'd get more into that? Probably. So, I mean, it's a pretty cool experience so far from what I'm checking. It, 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 is, it is the right size for a comic book. How much da- uh, data does a typical comic book take up versus... Like how much is the space is that going to run you? I have no idea, honestly. I, I uh, they download in the app, and I don't think there's much else for information. No, you can't really. Yeah, you, you really can't tell. Maybe if you had some program to go in there and check it out. Um, but they you seem know, to download pretty quick. 
I mean, like you're talking to a guy who's gonna like if you if you download a bunch of books. I mean, is it gonna take like how how long is it gonna take you to get to a gig? I guess is what I'm wondering because that's where it's gonna be relevant. Well, I think it's gonna come. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't, it can't be that big. I mean, I'm sure it's compressed. It's optimized for the iPad and compressed accordingly. So and and, and you know, a typical issue is gonna be what like 20 pages now. Like here, I, I'm pulling up. This is uh, 52 week number one for DC's big crossover where like Superman and Batman disappear. It's 27 pages. It seemed to download pretty quick. I was downloading them on my phone over 3G, and it seemed to be pretty decent. Um, yeah, I think he's more worried about hitting his data cap than anything. Data cap or filling? No, I don't. Well, I don't have a data cap on my iPhone, yeah, but you do. I, I'm just thinking about space on my phone. Okay. Or yeah. my iPad. Yeah, and that's a concern. Uh, but I think it's going to be like a read it and throw it away kind of thing, you know? Or, you know, I guess it's going to depend on your habit. I mean, because I mean, re- why would you keep more than a few books on your on your pad at the same time? Now, do you, well, that's a good point. Do you have a database that if you've bought stuff, you can maybe go back and get it? Exactly. Later? Exactly. That's how it's hooked up. That's how you can oh, okay. get it. That's how, like, like we're saying, how you can pull it up over here and, and bring it over. Oh, here we go, Matt. Silent Ninjas pu- pulled it up. Typical file sizes are 10 megabytes for colored single issues, 30 megabytes for black and white trade paperbacks, and 60 for colored trade paperbacks. Oh, well, that's nothing. That's no, nice. that's that's easy. 10 megabytes. So I've downloaded, like I, like I said, I went through just a bunch of the free ones. I downloaded maybe 20 free ones. So, you know, that's what, 200 megabytes. So that's not bad at all. So, um... But I don't know. It, it, it's interesting, and it's nice to see uh, some of these publishers. And oh, also cool here. And Chachi, I don't know if you want to bring this up, but there's also options here. Uh, you can buy it in print, and that was one of the things one of the creators was saying that you have that option in here. Uh, much like you know, you go watch a movie, you go rent a movie, and you want that physical copy for yourself, uh, or or you see a piece of artwork online and you want to buy that, to put it on your wall. Uh, Maybe it's going to be the fact that most people get it on the digital because the readers, you know, not the collectors. But then they're like, well, I want to see the artwork. I want to have it, you know, physically because I thought it was such a great issue. Then people are going to be buying the print. Maybe the print's going to start becoming more of the premium than the digital. And it sort of is already in the cost. And there is a link right here for going through the full series. And there's the rest of the 52-week line. And say, again, all $1.99 it looks like. Uh, so you can get that whole thing. Oh, my God. They actually did 52 issues of this. I haven't been paying attention to comics for a bit. Um, but anyways, that, that'd be expensive. Man, the trade paperback for that. Wow. Uh, anyways. And you wonder why paper or paperback comics are declining in sales. But it's, you know, and that was the other thing. Everybody complains about crossover events as far as comic goes. They're like, yeah, I know everybody complains about uh, 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 crossover events, they were saying. But we see the numbers rise when we do a crossover, when we do a major crossover. So as long as those numbers, as long as you keep buying the crossovers because you're trying to keep up, we're going to keep doing them. And that's just business, you know. But there you go. So speaking of words... (laughs) (laughs) Without pictures attached to them? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. You know, in other book news... There's new words in the Oxford English Dictionary. Oh, are there, Chachi? There are. Um, Is Chachi says become part of it yet? No. They've decided that retweet and sexting have been added to the Oxford English Dictionary, along with words that are actually words. (laughs) (laughs) And cyberbullying is another one of them. Okay, okay. So basically they're just trying to keep up with the time. Well, it is, and it is kind of part of our, our culture and our society now by the, using these words. You know, cyberbullying is in, like, how yeah. many newscasts? What's up? This article is funny. Why? Apparently, Woot made yes. the Oxford English Dictionary. Yes. And it's spelled without zeros. Yes. So, there's that. So, yeah. So, not without its controversy. No. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Well, what was the word that beat out bacon in those word of the years uh, for those 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 New York Times articles or whatever? Ah, uh, yeah. When's bacon going to get in there? Bacon. We need to submit it. We need an official. Like, how do you, how do you submit to the Oxford Dictionary? I don't know. We'll have to look into that. Uh, in other news, Skype adds Group Me to social portfolio. Adds what? Group Me. That sounds dirty. How do you it do is. that? Uh, I believe it's like a group texting huh. kind of service. 
Uh, oh. But that's kind of random, considering they're still... Well, yeah, they're not exactly uh, a bot yet, so I guess they can still independently group. But what does that do? Does that, like, change your... You know, that doesn't add how much you're going to get for Skype, is it? Uh, this, this whole thing doesn't even make sense to me. Why? They already have this. They ha they have texting. Yeah. So if if it's a mobile group app, messaging, it's kind of like Huddle for uh, for Google uh, Plus. If they have an app, mm -hmm. they have mobile messaging. Okay. Okay. That's all there is to it. Uh, maybe it's a maybe it's a talent grab I or mean, something. I mean, they're not gonna people aren't gonna necessarily pay attention to their their Skype app, but. I mean, oh, well, that, that's a good point by John on the last story. How else is Grandma going to know what sexy means if she can't look it up in the book? That's true. Now you know. All right. You know. So, uh, yes, Skype buys so, a useless company. Can we can we talk about uh, speaking of useless acquisitions? Uh, can we talk about uh, the 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 WebOS craziness this past week? Mm. Have you been following this, Rob? It's kind of funny. What? <laughs> what? What's up? Uh, well, I mean, it's all really, really silly. So, basically what's happened is that HP bought Palm, and then they 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 did terrible things with it. And <laughs> terrible, terrible, dirty ter things. Dirty things. There's actually, uh, I was reading something, uh, this, my cat's chasing her tail, it's amazing. Earlier this week, uh, <laughs> that said that... So once somebody figured out how to run WebOS on an iPad, uh, everybody in the WebOS hardware development team just completely gave up. <laughs> because for some... And that was, like, told by one of the engineers who was on the team because they said that they were forced to work on this really terrible hardware, and it was it was just awful. All the tablets that they tried to put WebOS on were just this inane, archaic hardware... And somebody figured out how to put it on, on an iPad 2, and it was exponentially, like, liquid fast. And at that point, they just kind of gave up on it. So, this has been a hard problem this whole time? Yes. Mm. And it's it, it all goes back to, uh, it was probably Gruber who wrote something about it, but that um, the CEO of HP changed shortly before they, um, they, uh, they purchased uh, Palm. And it was basically the hypothesis is that had had there been more time between the potential to acquire Palm and this guy's hiring, they probably wouldn't have bought Palm and Palm would have sunk. Well, they said like this guy uh, that that came on as as the head is more of a uh, a uh, business guy, more of a yeah. business enterprise guy. So I mean, to the point where they're talking about selling off the PC division, the personal computer division. Right. Uh, which is the PCs, which is the PCs that we see in the stores, you know, which well, is the, pretty much the public face of what we see in, in Hewlett Packard. Right. But what, what HP wants to do at this point is become IBM. Yeah. They want to sell exactly. mainly business components mm -hmm. and step away from the person, personal computing sector. Because Dell and everyone else pretty much have that wrapped up. Yeah, you know how... One thing I've noticed out of this story, the, they're talking about that and how the margins aren't terribly great when it comes to personal computers. You, you know how like everybody's like, oh, PC is so much cheaper than a Mac. He's like, yeah, there's a reason. Because they've cut corners, they've slimmed margins, and uh, and now like the biggest... Isn't HP the biggest right now, PC manufacturer? Aren't they the ones on top? No? Them or Dell. Them or Dell. Yeah. But one of the, I mean, they're the top five, if not the top two. And you know, yeah. so, and you know what? And, and both they, of them. And they want to ditch it? And then, then. Both of them could be easily replaced by everyone below them. Exactly. So exactly. it doesn't matter at this point. Yeah, they're interchangeable for having such a variety. Um, if HP wants to continue making guaranteed money, stay in the personal computing sector. Uh, I is I don't know if it's so much guaranteed money anymore. If the bottom's kind of falling out of that industry, I mean that's declining every year. It has been for several years. So, um, but the WebOS they're looking to license out. I don't know who's going to want it at this point. At, at this point in time, they they're not getting their one two one point. What is it? One two one point two billion. 
worth out of the uh, yeah, bomb buy. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't see how they expect it to. No. They're, they're dumb. Well, how, how many years are we still going to have a PC market, really? I mean, how how many, how many long until everybody just has an iPad? You know, how long until it's a tablet world? Or, or something to that extent, you know? I mean... You know, even you know, this weekend we had uh, Malengo had a slate he was he was working on, so he could like show off working on the comic, you know, there at the table, and you know, using Photoshop, and you know, how many people have these things? Matt, uh, Silent Ninja here has a has a touch computer himself, you know, and yeah, I'm sure you're probably looking at a slate for your next one, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, there's so many options, and it's not just a tower PC, a laptop PC anymore, so. I don't know. I, I, it's uh. It, well, did anybody uh, did anybody see the uh, the ninety nine dollar craziness over the touchpads? I didn't even bother to look. You didn't even look. No, I, I, I woke up. It's... I woke up Saturday morning to a bunch of people saying I was going to, but then I didn't. Yeah, like AJ. Okay. AJ it... said that he was up at three a.m. looking for Friday, it. looking for it, mm-hmm. found it, mm-hmm. and then uh, decided not to, mm-hmm. and then went from there. And, and and people are looking at this is a piece of this is a device that you can potentially put Android on when somebody hacks it. So, and it was a pretty nice piece of hardware, I guess. Although he said that you you, you could cut yourself on the grill. Right. So I, I know he's tweeting something out earlier this week about it. So well, there you go, HP. Nice knowing you. No. No, it wasn't nice knowing HP. No. Hey, you know who? You know who's really awful? Huh. I, this is not segging into a story. I wish Nebraskans. it was. But... But Dell, Dell, Dell is really awful. Okay, what have they been doing lately? Remember the Dell streak? <laughs> yeah, that was a good idea. A so I bought one. Phone. You bought um, one? Well, back in uh, when it come out in March. Yeah, they came out in March. I was one of the first people to buy one, not for myself, but because a client wanted us to do something. But it was actually funny story. Um. Dell wanted us to do something with the Dell Streak, so they hired somebody from the outside to buy a Dell Streak to do something with the Dell Streak. <laughs> wow. Well, that's interesting. Okay, that's, so anyway, so it turns out that we couldn't get no. the Dell Streak to do what we wanted it to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you can probably... Do you know anybody who has a Dell Streak, the tablet? No. No, no I yeah. don't think I've seen it. Me either. Kind of kind of fell kind of flat. Um, so I... Uh, we returned it, you know, as, as one does when you buy a product and it doesn't work out. And uh, so they got it back in April, and I've called <laughs> them no less than seven times at this point. Okay. We still haven't gotten our refund. Oh, jeez. Yeah, Dell Business Strategies. There you go. Yeah, Dell Business Strategies. Uh, screwing over their customer is one of their business strategies. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, how's how's everything else doing? Like, how's the Zoom doing? How's uh, how's the the tab doing when it's not getting uh, you know, injunctioned into oblivion in foreign countries? You know, I feel uh, like I, Dell has a foothold in in business yeah, and yeah. very low end consumer computers. Mm-hmm. Like, are they even? I mean, I'm the. I feel like the. Uh, the PC gaming market has taken quite a hit recently because of mobile gaming and, and console games being much easier to deal with and you don't have to keep up with components and stuff. But, like, if you are going to, like, you look at the line of Dell computers, you would think that the money they'd be making, really, pocket change, would be, um, like, higher-end gaming computers. You know, they're not making much money off of the $300 laptop. Yeah. But do, do anybody, does anybody actually buy those anymore? Is that still a thing? Uh, the hardcore, the hardcore still do. I think they're still. But, but are they buying from Dell or are they building themselves? Well, there's Alienware. I mean, Alienware was always and then in Dell bought Alienware. And Dell bought Alienware. That but is Alienware still like really popular? Uh, I don't know. I, the last people I knew that bought an Alienware. Uh, that yeah, was I still can't. Alienware. I, I but then again, how many people do you know there <laughs> in our circle that have Macs? Let's be yeah, you know, let's be honest, you know. Ooh. I mean, I got you know, Chachi. What you built yours? Yeah, you built yours. You're running an HP. Sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry about that HP. Sorry about that HP, pal. Uh, but no, that you've had that for a couple of years. You're good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. My wife has. I think it's a gateway, just like the cheapest gateway we could get, just she, so she had a PC. That's all she cool. needs. You know. Uh, it, I can't think of anything anybody else has. Business computers. That's all I see. It's business computers. 
and Macs. Everybody's got a MacBook, it seems, these days. So. Oh, we lost somebody. Rob. Rob's out. It should call him back. It's calling him back. That's what the sonar means. Um, so he's not going to answer me back <laughs> when I ask him this. While um, we're waiting, let's take a look at the picture from... Uh, let's turn him down and, uh, and check out this picture. Oh, there we go. That's what is from... this? Oh, yes. This was a picture I took. Uh, sorry, audio people. Uh, <laughs> but we... <laughs> this is the visual portion of the show. But like I said, we were at uh, the... Uh, uh, the uh, Baltimore Comic Con, and this guy came up, and I was like, "Oh, come here! Uh, I know, I know, I'm awesome. Let's not make a big deal about it." Was the shirt, and I gave him a sticker to put on. So yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. All right, yeah, yeah. It's fan interaction, folks. Fan interaction. Uh, so uh, Norm, I understand there's some uh, WordPress security stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal, and it's nothing, nothing new. But earlier today. Um Funky Dung actually and Justin Kanaki were tweeting about this stuff, and mm -hmm. um, I found uh, there's a five minute, like it's five, like literally a very easy thing you can do to uh, make your WordPress more secure. And I was just digging into it, and it was just some some really basic stuff that you can do to um, protect your WordPress blog. And as everybody knows, I'm like a WordPress geek, so I do my best to know everything I can about it. Um, and uh, I, I want. I'll pass this along. Uh, it was on problogger.com, uh, and it's it's just some some simple tips like moving your WordPress config file, and uh, deleting your admin account. You know, updating your plugins and uh, installing uh, some security plugins to to really kind of make your uh, make your installation as secure as possible. So, um, again, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, that uh it's it's not anything new i mean it's easy if you are googling like wordpress security there's a lot of articles about it a lot of a lot of blog posts about tips you can use you can do to to, to make your wordpress safe but again i was i was d digging into it earlier today because i was looking for something specific so uh i had my mind wrapped around it hey you're you're a big wordpress user is that is you worried about the security issues you know i've heard very few um stories about people getting hacked on wordpress mm -hmm. i mean i think like it just comes down to like leaving some like major holes open um none of the blogs i've ever used have been hacked so that's you know a plus but you know i'm not i'm i'm typically not managing blogs that are getting like massive traffic so yeah um yeah. they're probably not targets but um you know it, it's it's definitely good i mean these tips are like it's very simple to 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 just read this, learn how to do it and just, just do it. And, um, yeah, so I would, I would definitely recommend anyone who's managing their own WordPress blog to take a look at it. And, um, now I'm looking at this, I'm, I'm familiar with the, uh, oh, delete the admin account. Yeah. I mean, it's like basic stuff that like, so WordPress is, is so systematic in terms of what they do. And it's a really mm -hmm. secure system anyways, and they're constantly upgrading it to protect it. So, you know, stuff like that, like anyone who's going to try to hack into your WordPress, they're going to know, the basic rules of the game. So if you're, if they already know that you have a, a user that's going to be named admin, because that's the default admin user that get, when you when you make an installation, it's just they're halfway there to uh, to get your password. You know, so they, they know your username, your ad, admin, administer username. Um, so you know, change it to anything, like even if it's just blog admin or your name or whatever you want, just as long just change it. You know, you can use one character to change it, obviously. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, and, and what is this uh, WordPress uh, security scan and secure? I actually haven't seen. So those before. are two plugins that you can install, and what they do is they kind of look at it from a basic level to a to a to more. I guess uh, I just started using one of the the security scan today, so that's one of the reasons I was digging into it. And they they look at certain things. They look at certain files and folders that you have, like your HD access file or your WordPress content file and um, look at the, uh, the security level that you have set for it, you know, your, um, your, your code, your access code for it. And then, you know, if you need to change that, it'll give you a recommendation. Um, and then and, and, and other different things too. So mm -hmm. there, there's a few, there's a few different settings there. And um, uh, so, yeah, so I guess that's it. Cool. Cool. 
Uh, what do you think? I haven't been thinking about this a lot because, of course, you hear those ads for Squarespace everywhere. I actually had somebody walk up to me last week and uh, ask, hey, I got a buddy that wants to do a quick, really quick website. And I was like, just because I knew it was something that I wouldn't deal with it and I didn't want to get a call about it. Like, I'm just, just Squarespace.com. Just tell your friend to do that. Uh, you know, kind of thing. Uh, you, do you have any thoughts on that versus WordPress these days? Yeah, I mean, I think, <laughs> well, I'm always going to advocate for WordPress. And if you want a free, quick and dirty thing, I would go to WordPress.com. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they're, it's simple to set up and it's it's got all the latest features. So you don't have to manage the back end at all. Of, yeah, like yeah. all the stuff that I'm talking about, Auto- Automatic does all that, you know, the company who owns WordPress. So they, they manage all of that security and stuff for you. Uh, and you just have to worry about publishing your content. And you can even change your, the domain name of your site on WordPress.com. So you don't, if you really don't want to, you don't have to ever manage the technical end of the website. Um, I mean, if you need more, more, uh, more options, if you need to control it more, the, the installation, or, yeah. you know, if you're really trying to customize the site, obviously you need dot wordpress.org to, to get you there. But, um, I would, I would just go, if you're, if you're, if you're going to compare to Squarespace just for a really casual user, I would guide them to wordpress.com and, they have tons of themes now and they're constantly up- upgrading. And um, I just watched the WordPress state of the union from WordCamp in San Francisco <laughs> and uh, Matt Mullen, like he like, they're really dedicated to, to, to making it as the best piece of content management software that you can have online. Like that's, that's definitely one of their goals. And an interesting fact, by the way, is out of every uh, one of uh, every 10 new websites that, that exist 20, two or 24 percent are running wordpress so that's an an interesting statistic so Hmm. even if you're not going to use a blog and you just need a couple of pages wordpress just makes it so easy i mean i always guide a lot of people in that direction just because unless you need something really custom unless you're trying to make a social network or or proprietary thing you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna be uh okay with wordpress yeah yeah I, i use wordpress for for most of my projects Actually, all my projects probably. Uh, it's it's been pretty. It's pretty. I'm actually fixing one up for a friend, and I don't know what the hell they did with this thing. Um, but uh, but it, it is nice. And in that jetpack that goes through WordPress.com has been a really interesting plugin to play with uh, lately, uh, with their stats package and everything. Oh yeah, jet jetpack is awesome. Um, I mean, the, what jetpack is is what they're trying to do is every every piece of every plugin that. They write for WordPress.com that they publish in another plugin. They kind of are bundling it all into Jetpack. So what you do is like you don't have to update five or six different plugins. You can just update Jetpack, and it, and it keeps everything up to date. It does feel um, it does feel like an answer to Squarespace's uh, kind of widgets. Oh, did we lose you? No, I'm sorry. I'm here. Oh. Uh, I uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, it. it it could, it does do that. I think it was WordPress trying to make their updating easier. Uh, so I don't use everything in Jetpack actually. I only use no, a couple. Yeah. I just haven't had a need for for some of the features that they have. But one one of the ones that's newer that's really cool is the share uh, widget. Uh, I guess yeah, that's what you call it, right? The the so when we're running it on the Podcamp Pittsburgh website, and it's you know share with Facebook, share with all your different services um, and it kind of automatically just drops all those share buttons in there. It doesn't look that great in my opinion, but it's quick and dirty. It gets and it the job get. done and, and it, it, I don't, yeah, because a lot of times those, uh, the Facebook and the Twitter and, and whatever uh, plugins, they really put it in, they don't give you much control of where to put it and how it looks, especially when you're using more than one of them. And it's nice to have those just kind of bundled together there in one line. The way right, the way Jetpack right, does it, I, I've actually started implementing on a couple of sites I work on, and there was like I actually popped on a, a one of my clients' website and forgot I turned it on. I was like, oh, this has been retweeted. Oh, oh, this is nice. Oh, this is oh, hello. Um, and I actually no, that was my own blog that I forgot I turned it on on. Uh, and and it's nice to see that uh, uh, kind of kind of feedback through there. Um, and I think it's it it presents better than most of the plugins I've used too. So there's no just no Google Plus One on there yet. So I still have to do that independently. But I'm sure that's coming as soon as they open up that API. So they do have a feature to add um, other sites, and I haven't fooled around with it. But I think if you there, there, there's probably a way for you to manually add that to the coding. list. So I mean, maybe you and I can mess around with that for PodCamp actually. But um, mm-hmm. 
I, I did notice that, and I, I again, I didn't try it. Chilla mentions uh, what, what happened to Angel Fire. And, you know, if you're if you're still rocking Angel Fire, you know, keep keep it strong, keep it strong. You're good. <laughs> See, it's good. It, yeah, it, uh, you know, as long as they're not the Geo Cities, because they finally cut that down and backed it up on a floppy or something. But uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Tripod's still around too, isn't it? I think that's all Lycos now, right? So I mean, the first website I ever had was on Tripod, and I. I tried to find it like with Wayback Machine or something, but I, I think it's gone forever. Yeah, yeah. GeoCities myself. GeoCities represent. Yeah, did, you, did you have a site too? Or uh, were you, did, was your stuff just over on my site? I don't know. We were networking from I, the very I start. I don't care. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> probably, probably best that's gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Exactly. So, uh, so I, I, we should mention PodCamp. You're one of the organizers there, Norm. Hey. Look at that. Well, actually, we're all organizers on actually, except Pretty for the Silent Ninja. So, uh, but it's coming up here. There's still a lot of lots of blogs were coming up this week, right? No, no, is that big flux done? I, I, people won't respond to me. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, if you want to write a blog but, for the pod camp website, contact this guy. Yeah. Just Where do they get audio? Chachi says at gmail dot com. There you go. There you go, Sticker Giant, who just did some tremendous stickers for us for yes. uh, for the con. Uh, but there are a lot of posts by a lot of people about their pod camp experience. It's really cool to see that. I was amazed by how many people responded there at the beginning of the month. That was a nice, nice uh, uh, rush of blogs that came in yeah, from I, some really I, cool I had people. Three weeks worth. Yeah, and I was going to keep it going, but then people just didn't want to do it anymore. So. You know, hey, well, let me know. I only wrote one post in that run, so so let me know if you, yeah, if you need to re up. Happy to write another curmudgeony post about hating social media. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, yeah, no, yeah. Rob, Rob, we'll just uh, transcribe your interview we did the other day. Yeah, just, oh yeah, that'll work. That'll be, that's right. That'll be cool. Who's your favorite? What was your favorite moment from Podcamp? Well, actually, <laughs> remember that time that and that other time that and see, I can't actually finish. And then any that of guy that and then that guy that made me that. angry. And then uh, yeah, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a good time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but hey, we'll have a lot of stuff going on there, and PodCamp's always really cool. Um, I like PodCamp. Yeah, it's a good thing. We'll be doing a live awesome cast there. I'm probably going to have too many sessions that I want to deal with, uh, and uh, but they'll all be fun, I hope. Um, yeah. There you go. Well, it's, we got a new location. I mean, have you guys talked yes. about PodCamp before? Uh, on, yeah, on we've, awesome? been, we've been mentioning it here and there on here. Okay, well, we're, we're going to be at Point Park University, which is different. Uh, which is amazing. The, the first new location for PodCamp in five years, so yes. it's pretty, pretty exciting, and uh, I think it's going to be it's it's going to be the the best space we've ever had for the event. Mm-hmm. And uh, when if you when you come and when you attend, it, it's 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 going to be the right because we've we've outgrown the Art Institute, and now I think this current location is just for the right amount of attendees that we currently have. This is just the perfect location, and we have a big, huge auditorium, and then other and more intimate spaces as well as just. If you want to get away and have a quick conversation with someone, there's tons of really cool um, areas in the building that you can just kind of retreat to and, and have your own little space. So Point Park has been really great so far and uh, and help in getting us in and, and, and working out the details. So uh, I think everyone's going to be really impressed with with the upgrade to the location. And that's really cool because it's, it's it's scary going to a new location like this. You know, you know we, we kind of had had the uh, the art stew down to a science to how we present PodCamp. And it's uh, it's pretty nice to, uh, uh, you know, have things pretty much feels like mostly figured out at this stage of the game. Right, right. And so, yeah, so we can just take what we know and apply it to the new location. And so far, we've, uh, we've, we've just... It's been, been pretty smooth, so I'm excited. I'm, I'm really pumped about it, and it's going to be an awesome event. And mm. I haven't been keeping tabs on sessions coming in, but I know that they're rolling in. And, I'm uh, afraid to see the sessions coming in. <laughs> a, few, a few people have been contacting me on the side, and I've been directing them to the official like session registration. So if you want to present a session at PodCamp Pittsburgh, you have until the end of the month, which is next week. Uh, September 1st is the end of the session deadline. So if you have an idea and you've been kind of procrastinating, get over there, submit your session. Stop procrastinating. Get it exactly, in and get it in, and then we will be uh, posting the schedule in a few weeks after that. So uh, September again, September first is the deadline. Podcamp is going to be on September seventeenth and eighteenth, and uh, so yeah, so head over to podcamppittsburgh.com yes. to get all the details. So if you want to, you want to uh, put your session in on why one of our podcasts made you quit your schooling, uh, make sure you get that in now. 
Uh, I heard about that. Uh, yeah, about that. yeah, that was interesting. Apparently, uh, last week's episode of Freelance for Real, we uh, somebody was tweeting Justin and and somebody else saying that uh, uh, last week's episode of Freelance for Real made them uh, quit going to school to wow. pers- to learn on their own and pursue on their own. Wow, uh, for computer programming, I believe. So, well, nobody wants to do that anyway. Nobody wants a computer program, or nobody wants to go to school for computer programming. Both. Oh. <laughs> you learn anything, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so maybe you should listen to that that one from last week, man. Maybe be a little bit. You know, I really feel like in today's world, you can if if you have the right resources, you can teach yourself how to do pretty much anything. It's motivation, I think. It, you know, yeah, a lot of if people, you have YouTube, especially. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, I mean, a lot of people go to school because they don't know what they want to do in general. Like we talked about, this was pretty much the discussion we had <laughs> last week on uh, Freelance for Real number ten. Uh, so we're trying to meet com. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was a talk. It was like, you know, really, is it needed? You know, it, 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 people can, you know, how many, this startup that's taken all these, uh, fresh minds out of school to do startups. How many have dropped out or didn't even bother school to go do startups and do, they're doing fine? <laughs> You know. Right. Well, uh, you know, you don't go to school necessarily to learn every piece of knowledge in your life or your career. No. You kind of go there for the contacts. Like a lot, like for me, uh, this is my main example. Is I, you know, I went to school and and I, my the network of people that I had that led to my career so far really came from that. And um, I mean, again, I guess I got hired by the school, so that is a <laughs> kind of a a weird example. But you know, you go there and your your teachers know people and and they connect you to people who are working in the world, and so mm-hmm. you kind of go there to build a network. Uh, but I guess now with Facebook, you don't really need that. So yeah, yeah, it, it's it, that, that's part of it. That is part of it. I mean, and we talk about like you know how many times do you hear? Uh, Norm, maybe you've heard this too. You know, coming from the same school, but how many do you hear, hear your old classmates saying, oh, "I didn't really learn anything there. They didn't really teach me anything there that I needed." Yeah, you kind of need to do more than just sit there and absorb. Right. Especially in a creative field like we're trying to do. Yeah. So, well, you get out of it what you put into it. Exactly. Exactly. And you have to put a lot into it. You can't just sit back, well, hey, I survived that class. I should be go- good to go for the real world. No, you need to get out there and do independent stuff. The people that went out and had a job right away pretty much already had a job three quarters from graduating. They they worked it. They hustled it. They they got in with somebody good, and they have a job, and you know, and, and they're and, and they're good to go. You know. Uh, and I think it's changing as far as that, especially as much as, uh, you know, school costs have been raising. So, well, on that note, we do have to get out of here. It's time for mayhem. Hold on. Oh, oh, there's, there's a hold on. How do you do a screenshot on this? A screen? For, yeah, for she, forsaken Mac. On a Mac? Yes. Uh, that would be Apple Shift 3. I'm about to educate you. What's going on I here? I don't see an Apple button. Should have Google oh, it. Command. command. Command Shift 3. Does it say Command? Clover. Isn't it command a... Shift 3. Okay. Okay. I hope I got that. All right, okay. go ahead. Okay. Wrap it up. <laughs> so, uh, Norm, Norm, <laughs> things that you're doing, you're, of course, at itwixie.com. You also have your blog. What else do you want to throw out there? Podcamp Pittsburgh on September 17th and 18th. It's <laughs> podcamppittsburgh.com. We don't have anything else. Yeah, itwixie. I'm doing uh, marketing and sales for them. So, if you need to reach tweens or you want market research on tweens, I'm your guy. Yeah, buddy. What? I, what does that mean? What? I don't know. <laughs> Rob De La Creta, first yeah. of all, I got to say, that is, mm-hmm. oh, I don't know what you did since, but you had some tremendous lighting going on. Like, you know, you it's were, just uh, the, it's the lighting you're used to in my living No, room. you were like all front lit and everything, and it was pretty amazing. It was getting dark behind you. It was epic. It was epic yeah, and, about 10 and minutes then, And then I realized that I was probably only illuminated by my MacBook screen, and I should probably But sometimes on. that's enough. Uh, <laughs> you got anything going on you want to plug there? Where are you going? Um, Where are you traveling on the adventures of Rob this week? I'm going to Kansas City. Ooh. Kansas City, Kansas is also Kansas City, Missouri, by the way. Did you know that? They're the same thing? They're like five miles away from each other. Oh. Yeah. That seems weird. Yeah, because we, we shipped our gear to Kansas City, Kansas, and then I was looking at our hotel reservation, and it was for Kansas City, Missouri, and there was like five minutes of panic where we were trying to figure out if we had misbooked something or sent our gear to the wrong place. Oh. And then we realized that everything was fine because Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri are essentially the same thing. Oh. There you go. You should start a travel blog or that's something. Like, as much as you're getting out there. That's Nebraska messed up is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> It's not too far from Nebraska, I don't think. No, it's not. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to Kansas. I hear they have good steak, good barbecue. Oh. 
Uh, apparently, that's a thing out there. No. Awesome. <laughs> so I got that going good, for good, me. Good to know. And you good know what? Know. You're not going to Nebraska, and that's all that really matters. I'm certainly. It, are the, what's the major? Omaha, Nebraska. I don't think I'm ever going to go to Nebraska for work. No. <laughs> I no. can't imagine that they would have something big know. enough. Maybe you'll do a kiosk at a tractor show. Or Lincoln. Lincoln's a big city. Lincoln. Lincoln. The, you know. Can't be. Can't be. That's the capital. But I don't think yeah. it's that big. Uh, Anyways, moving on. Back enough with ooh. the geography lesson. Silent Ninja. Do we do anything? Not yet. Not yet. He's going to be doing something soon. I'm no, sure. he's not. Oh, I have a WordPress on her. Is there anything going on at that WordPress? Not really. No, not really? Not don't go to that WordPress. But you can <laughs> follow him at the Silent Ninja. He's been watching a lot of How I Met Your Mother. Really? Because everyone should. Yeah, I mean, everybody should. Yes. Well, I'm all going to cut up except for the last season. Oh, there you go. Until it gets on DVD. There you go. And of course, there's Chachi. Chachi says dot net. Unsung. The nonprofit news show. We'll right. have a new episode on Monday. Yes. And Norm will be on that if all works out as well. And Rob is going to be on oh. that as well. Making oh, yeah. some, some appearances. Might as well just rename it Awesome Cast. It's going to be the Awesome uh, <laughs> uh, Nonprofit News Show this yes. week. Uh, so so go check that out. Pittsburgh on video.org. Uh, you got your Chachi says dot net. You're taking on Scott Bayo. I'm trying to. Has he responded to you yet? No. Because you put out some pretty mean things. This Listen, week. I, I've I've discovered that it is really hard to gain the attention of a celebrity on Twitter mm-hmm. unless you're directly telling them to f off. Okay. Like if you're not adding them and saying go f yourself, they're not going to respond to you. So, yeah, my creativeness of insults are doing nothing. Because on deaf it, ears! Falling yes. on deaf ears! Because I'm this not directly matter. telling him to go F himself. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's a so, shame. That's yeah. a shame. And right, then there's me. I'm yeah, Mike Sorg. Nobody cares. I do Sorg things at SorgatronMedia.com, Sorgatron.com. There's that PodCamp thing. There's lots of stuff going on. Yeah. I ate crab in Baltimore. He stared at me. <laughs> it really kind of creeped me out. You went, so, to Bal- kids. you went to Baltimore and you had crab. Ooh. Like I know. Else. Seriously, a serious shout outs to Justin and Ann and uh, Don and the Papuga and uh, and Jack, who were uh, a tremendous and showed us the town down there and uh, made sure we didn't go in the blue light areas, which apparently is bad news in the Baltimore area. So we learned a lot. <laughs> so thanks to them. Uh, guys, you can check us out. Awesomecast.com. Awesome. Well, contact at awesomecast.com or 724. 724- Two two five a cast yeah there two, it is five, two, uh, there's an ad over it over here I can't see it uh, you can also follow us at awesome cast on Twitter follow us on Facebook check us out on iTunes on your Roku box on YouTube on Blip TV uh, all kinds of places just look up Sorgatron Media Awesome Cast and you can find us doing stuff and right, Chachi's doing all kinds of stuff over there you can catch us live doing this kind of crazy stuff at live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday at 11 p.m. Tuesday. Eastern. 11 or I'm sorry 7 p.m. Eastern I was like wait a 7 minute. 11 p.m. Eastern what the hell no <laughs> 7 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com and uh, and you can chime in here live with the chat room and make fun of my graying hair uh, we'll see you guys next week awesome cast out Sweet.